Well, that was a fun game. Wait a minute. Isn't there a movie adaptation of this game? Dark Space? Hmm. I don't know. I'll find out. Dark Space. Yeah. Well, wait. No. I don't think this is it. But still. You can't tell me, based on the cover art, that they're not trying to at least associate with the popular game. Look at that. Fear the dark. Yeah, right. Hmm, Still Night Monster Movie. Another blatant ripoff of the classic Universal logo. Why is this format so popular? Anyway, Phase 4 Films proudly brings us a beautifully rendered After Effects opening space scene. Beginning our opening scene with what looks like a giant fishbowl, with lots of optical flares we see two young lads trying to book a vacation getaway on another planet called Centauri 5 which is a de facto planetary naming scheme for writers and directors who don't have time to give a shit. Entry's most visited vacation destinations. Wait, most visited vacation destinations based on what? Shit you can find on any habitable planet? I guess there's something we should know about the planet they're on. Was there some kind of natural disaster? Oh, whatever, moving on. Two overly charismatic males are trying to book a rental spaceship to Centauri 5. The movie clearly wants you to understand the insecure ladies' man is a degenerate, who's repeating his senior year in what I hope is college, but you never know with these movies. While the other is a responsible character always trying to keep him in check and act as what I like to call the Jiminy Cricket of the movie. At some point, the roles are likely to reverse, but let's continue to see if we can get more quaint, in-your-face character establishing scenes. Can we just put the ship on my name? It shouldn't be a problem as long as you have a clean flight record. You can pick your ship up outside on the landing dock. Uh, where would be a good place to pick you up? That line always works. Keep in mind here, this is actually a very short film, so the director has a limited amount of time to quickly set up the tone for our characters. The best way to do this is... A beer funnel, generic punk rock music, and of course, some idiot screaming, Spring Break! Now, we have our degenerates. You know, I never really liked how easily this works. Even in big budget movies these days, actors barely have to even spout off a sentence or two they just have a few quick clips in a montage of actors drinking and smoking and laughing at absolutely nothing. I mean, what are they laughing at? What the fuck is going on here? So he says, do you love me? And she says, no, but that's a real nice ski mask. <laughs> Next, we're treated to the love interest of our responsible character versus the I just want to bone everyone I see character. More contrasting, somehow it always works. Ceramics lab? Is that where you meet these girls? Hey, don't knock the ceramics lab. I get more pussy there than most people get in their lifetime. The spaceship flies the Nexus from Star Trek Generations, and we come to find out that one of our ladies might be pregnant. Oh, and there's apparently a steady breeze on this very tiny space capsule. Following the surprise secret relationship, we get some really strange camera angles. Is it just me, or does he literally grow four to five inches here? 
Here, he's the same height as her, but the next frame, he's towering over her like an ogre. Now we're moving on to the uh, smart one. This is the engineer of the group. The brains of the operation. He's the skinny one and reads a lot like we're meant to infer he's a genius or something. For one of my classes. Well, it's kind of advanced. Avionics? Yeah, avionics. I took you? that class last semester. <laughs> Why is that funny? Why is that funny? I don't fucking get it. Hey, guess what? I took humanities and AMP in college. Fucking hilarious. We're almost 10 minutes into the movie and no one's name has been divulged to the viewers. So I'm referring to the characters returning from the broom closet as Guy 2 and Girl 1. Girl 1, with all her up and coming problems, decides the spaceship is moving too slow. So the engineer is talked into removing the constrictor, which no one seems to know about. This great idea to manually hack the ship's hardware is ultimately what leads the ship to crash. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a movie. So, thank God for great ideas. <laughs> I think I finally found what's really been bothering me about this movie. The audio is just off. If there's ever a possibility of having audio too crisp and clear, I think we have it. Listen to this shit. No matter how far away or what environment these characters are in, they always sound like they're whispering right in your motherfucking ear. That's just fucking annoying. The nose up so that the bottom of the ship is parallel to the surface of the planet. You need to pull the nose up so the bottom of the ship is parallel to the surface of the planet. They decide to take the spaceship in manually, but crash land because Flower can't reach the joystick, which is clearly within her reach, and we finally land on an unknown planet, which is where we'll spend the remainder of the movie. Not in dark space. What are we gonna do now? We're going to fill up our Best Buy laptop bags with desk fans and Bluetooth radios to prepare for the Colorado wilderness. Hey, did you guys see that? See what? I thought I saw something moving up there along the ridge. No, I didn't. And guess what? Neither did you, because your back was clearly turned. That, and there is no ridge. While our intrepid space explorers are exploring everything but space, our engineer is trying to fix the ship. I think. You know, I'm, I'm actually not sure what he's doing. Shelley's paranoia leads our brave adventurers yeah, across go paths with a dirty stream of water, which they decide to swim in. Who would want this guy as a friend? I mean, there's stupid, and then there's blatant dumb and dumber stupid. I'm not quite sure which direction they're trying to take this guy, but fuck, he should have been dead a long time ago by drinking too much of his own urine. There's someone out there. Look. This looks like that guy you hooked up with at that frat party a couple weeks ago. <laughs> okay, that was funny. Did you see that? Oh, come on. Do I really have to describe how ridiculous that looks? I mean, where was that thing? Was it really that close to them? There's no explanation here. I have no idea what the fuck's going on. The only explanation is that she has eight sets of mechanical eyeballs and she has the equivalent of a 300 millimeter zoom lens built into them. Fuck. Darkness finally falls over the planet. Still no more space scenes anymore. Just in time for our engineer to get sidetracked from our very bashful looking monsters. So now we have our alien, which looks more like an ogre with really bad gingivitis. He lures the engineer out of the aircraft so he can sneak in, but apparently loses track of him shortly after and can't see him right behind the tree. 
The same cat and mouse and jump scare tactics are pulled off once again from our second group off in the wilderness, but here we come to find our monsters are actually being hunted by Mass Effect commandos. I also think Shelly dies somewhere in this scene, or somebody else, I don't know, I'm not sure. I'm still a little blind from all the optical flares. Our characters survive the Stormtrooper onslaught and begin what looks like some very reluctant character development. Devin! Devin, come on man, we gotta stay together! Devin! The parting of ways here helps show just how much our characters can change, and the new survival game at play will give us just the excuse and the push we need. Our award-winning jackass now very slowly can become the superhero, and our smart, calm, and collected group will now either die or need saving or cower in the corner and refuse to run from gun-toning maniacs. I think we should stay here. Just until morning. Swing back to our engineer, who can't seem to fix the ship, which I suspect is due to the fact he's not actually doing anything to fix it. And once again... <laughs> fuck's sakes, how many times do we need the same gag? It works once, maybe twice. After that, Jesus fuck, leave it alone. That's a relief. Just a potentially dangerous and almost certainly aggressive wild animal you know absolutely nothing about. Oh my god. You know, I read somewhere that having a beard automatically gives you an extra 50 points in your IQ. I don't think it's working. I'm feeling dumber by the second watching this movie. Well, never mind the wild animal, the engineer apparently has bigger problems. Another random alien ogre can smell his dead comrade and decides to take revenge on our skinny asthmatic by dragging him through the forest, but not before accidentally crushing his insides with a faulty door. Moving on to our two lovers, they decide to track the smartass by looking for broken twigs or deer droppings. I honestly don't know what the hell I'm looking at here. Did you hear that? Seriously? I would hope so. Did you hear that? Well, it was kind of faint. So, maybe- well, of course I fucking heard it, you dipshit! Shit, I think he saw us. Yes, I too think he saw you. And the appropriate response would be to run. Or just stand there. If you had any doubts whether he saw you before, well, he sure as fuck should have seen you by now. Before we continue, do you remember seeing this not too long ago? Can you possibly add this to a visually verified short list of possibilities regarding a vanishing stormtrooper into thin air? No? Well, poo on you. Recall earlier when I mentioned one of our characters ran off alone? whom we refer to as Jackass, was supposed to do some kind of development into a character of some kind, but instead of letting this bizarre experience change him in any way, he gets blown to pieces in the same stubborn, degenerate fashion he started with. So now, there's no more Jackass to deal with, and there's no more wisecracks to listen to. And guess what? Shortly before this movie ends, the love couple obviously gets torn apart, the guy dies, and the girl gets pissed. This is nothing new. She was always the badass of the group. If anyone were to actually stand their ground and fight, I'd suspect it to be her. They escaped the planet with their ship and managed to steal an entire fucking new ship away from the military and get back home. Whatever. Well, that was dark space. Clearly it had nothing to do with dead space. In fact, it didn't have much to do with space at all, except for the short hop it took to actually get to the planet in the first place. We are constantly led to believe that there are menacing aliens in this movie. In fact, Halfway across the movie, we're led to believe that there's more to these aliens than meets the eye. Literally. I mean, fuck, jump scare after jump scare, it got really repetitive. Okay, this is a low budget movie, why not judge it based on the things they have control of? Like, the sound, the visual, the acting, the editing, the direction. Well, the sad thing is, I am. They had control over every single flaw, and they weren't really budgetary. Just a few minor tweaks 
and you actually have a good movie. For instance, you could have the girl die instead of the jackass. You could have Flower die instead of the engineer. As it stands, they killed off the only two characters that were actually developing in some way. And you kind of need development of some kind if you're having a plot that is so overused and cliche to begin with. As it stands, by the end of the movie, you just watched a great visual piece of artwork with just a bunch of shit that happens. Nobody learned anything, nobody went anywhere, nobody did anything, nothing changed in the world that you're drawn into. Uh, things just kept on going. It didn't make any sense. And that brings the third biggest flaw of this movie is the world is not explaining anything. You don't have any idea what's going on. For instance, are the humans on the verge of extinction on their home planet? Is that why they're trying to terraform this new planet and wipe out the indigenous life forms? If you explain something like that, you might give a shit that these aliens are dying. And you might have a discussion or a debate with your friends after the movie. As it is, you don't give a shit because they don't explain it. They could just be wiping them out for fun or sport or just to make new condominiums. You just don't fucking know. So, at the end of this movie, just a bunch of shit happens. And you can't be drawn into it. You don't care. It's a great visual centerpiece for someone's emerging graphics artist career. But that's about it, because the visuals are great, but there is absolutely nothing else great about this movie. It's a solid C-, and you have no idea how hard it was to sit through this piece of shit. Hours and hours. This is the Arnie Corps channel. I'm getting the hell out of here.